You're in crisis mode. Because we do not take prisoners. By protecting Rhino, we're protecting every animal on the continent. If that means that we're able to save the species of the rhino, I think we had to look at it. It doesn't hurt them, it hurts me. Stewards of Wildlife is dedicated to protecting uh, wildlife and species worldwide, both in the United States as well as in their native countries, both common and endangered species. Right now, one of our biggest focuses is our rhino project. And our goal is to protect the cradle of genetics while creating a new one. For us here at Stewards of Wildlife, and for me personally, it's important that I come here to South Africa and go and check on the projects and partners that we're involved with to make sure that all of our funds are being spent properly. And that's what we're doing here today. We are in South Africa, and I'm going to go to our partners, and we're going to check on the in situ conservation that Stewards of Wildlife is a part of. What you're going to do is visualize a map of Africa, and you're going to visualize 33 countries with the lights on. Right. Then, in the last 20, 30 years, one by one, the lights have gone off. Of the 33 countries, there are only 10 countries still with rhino. Huh. Of those 10 countries, four of them have substantive populations or viable populations. The remaining six have incredibly marginal. For example, Uganda. Uganda's got 13 rhino left. We've never gone down this road. There's no road map for us. Yeah. This is all learning by doing. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Greed drives it, drives this, this, this incessant want for of, of, of rhino horn. The consumer nation is massive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got money, it's got disposable income. Our animals are being slaughtered, our families are threatened, our APU members are being shot, they are being bribed. So clearly, the whole structure is busy collapsing. Yeah. We're in crisis mode. We, as owners, and as government with legislation, trying to protect the animals with the legislation and permits is actually devaluing it. Right. And maybe not on purpose, but that's the, that was the end result. And, right. and, and if we're not going to bring the value back, then I can't see how people will see their way out in difficult economical um, environment to, to, to say, listen, we'll keep on throwing money after something. Right. That's really have no value. And, yeah. and, and I think that's what we must prevent Anything we can do to make this a larger working model for the benefit of the animals is vital. And I just hope that the biggest problem that we have in this entire industry doesn't raise its head and that is egos. What you guys are doing is, is to make people understand in a country that's got the resources to make a difference. Right. The value of the animals and the value of rhino. Although our project is really focused on bringing these rhinos to the United States so that we can create a new genetic safety deposit box that we can draw on in the future and bring these animals back to Africa if something happens to them here, that doesn't mean that we don't keep protecting them here. The cradle of genetics of the southern white rhino exists here in South Africa, and our goal is to protect that cradle of genetics while creating a new one. Under the pioneering concepts of the late Dr. Ian Player, who identified in the early 60s the need to create a value and the importance of sustainable utilization, encouraged private investment into rhino on a conservation basis. Right. So you can see now how through sustainable utilization, yes. South Africa has gone to the point where the private rhino owners in South Africa own more rhino than the rest of Africa combined. If you think about the history, if you saw the history with the white rhino, right. I mean, they were nearly extinct in the 50s. Extinct, yeah. It almost did, and there was about 50 individuals in Kaiser Den. And the only reason why he's just recently passed away is Ian Player. Right. Um, he suggested putting them onto the private ranches as well, the private guys. <laughs> Skyrocketed. And then when they got a price on for, for hunting, people yep. wanted to, to breed with them, and that's the, that's, the, that's the way that the white rhino came back from the brink of extinction. Absolutely. What can we do to fix it? Are we able to end or reduce end user demand? And we're talking about a tradition that goes back over 2,000 years. So we then came to the conclusion, if we were allowed to legally trade on, and the two direct benefits that come, come from that. First of all, 
revenue coming back yeah. to the custodians and owners of those rhino to further their conservation endeavors. Secondly, we are taking horn from stockpiles, yeah. supplying yeah. it to the end user market and diminishing pro killing pressure on our wild populations. This is South Africa's animals. And we're gonna be taking them to, to Texas to try to create that genetic deposit box and just wondering what your thoughts are on that. First of all, rhino belongs to the world. Right. And throwing money into Africa alone is not the only solution. Right. So any rhino baby that's, that's been born, doesn't matter where, then we've achieved something. Right. So if there's a, 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 a nucleus or, or a, a, a small herd and it can get a big herd in America, whatever country, and it's successful there, right. obviously that will contribute to, 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 to the rhino population. It will make people more aware in the world about what rhino is about. And, and, and yes, that's the way to save the rhino, to get everybody involved, not just in throwing money. That's not the only solution. Part of the solution is, is to create a herd like what you guys are planning to do. And, and I, I want to take my hat off for you. I think it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, it's an amazing initiative. We understand that this may be a never ending battle, but if we can educate the general public, garner support for the anti-poaching and the funds that they need, and bring together the local communities that are here on the ground, it's a battle worth fighting so that these rhinos can be enjoyed by all future generations.